So as I mentioned, the paper airplane simulation is really easy, but let me explain how it runs. First of all, you need six total volunteers. Four will serve as workers, one will be a manager, one will be a material handler. Each run lasts for five minutes, and there's something called an X-plane, and that'll show us how long it takes to build a plane from start to finish using different scenarios. So while we're running the simulation, we'll be measuring a lot of things. First of all, we'll be measuring space. You'll likely be running this in an office environment with tables, so space will be measured in number of tables used. The second thing is work in process, so how many planes are partially built at the end of the five minutes. The next is good parts. How many of those that are fully complete do I, as a customer, consider done correctly? Next we have percentage of good, so those number of done correctly divided by the total number of planes that they considered finished. Next we have lead time, and that is the X plane that I mentioned earlier. How long did it take to build a plane from start to finish once I inserted an X plane into the system? Then we have number of people. As I mentioned earlier, we start off with six, but as the simulation goes on, they learn to decrease that number. Next, there's time. All these simulations are going to run for five minutes. And last, we have productivity, which is a measure of good parts divided by people divided by time. So for the start of the simulation, let's follow historical flow. Now, if you recall, before Eli Whitney, everything was an art rather than a science, so everything was craft-based. There were no standards, so if you told someone to build you a rifle, they would build you a unique rifle. Now, for the start of this simulation, we will tell them to build this plane. In fact, we'll give them the model. Um, will they follow the standard? It's up to them. They usually uh, do a pretty good job mimicking what this is, sort of like craftsmen do, but uh, the standards really aren't there. Now in this portion of the exercise, we're going to use all six workers to be craftsmen for us. So let's see how this turns out. So before we get started with the simulation, I'm going to demonstrate how to build this paper airplane. Really simple. First thing you do is make a fold down the middle. Then you fold the nose piece. Then you fold the wings. Then you fold tips, just two folds on each side, and that's it. So this is the first run of the simulation. I was pretty fortunate to be able to find a group of undergrad students that were interested enough in leading to volunteer for this exercise. I gave them the same lesson in history you previously saw and let them know that all six of them would be building planes from start to finish like craftsmen. It still surprises me today to find out that companies out there pride themselves on using the centuries old way of thinking. They literally have an individual or small team build a large complex item, an automobile for example, from start to finish. Imagine how much training is needed for these craftsmen. If one of these amazing craftsmen were to win the lottery or retire, replacing them would take years. Notice how much frustration is involved with learning to build even a simple paper airplane from start to finish. And notice how slowly they're being built. Companies using craft-based manufacturing go as far as to pride themselves on taking months or years to deliver a product that is, quote, tailor suited to you. For some reason, this niche market they serve seems to not only accept, but expect this as a necessary cost of high quality. The reality is, craft-based products are generally of lower quality than those that are lean-produced or even mass-produced because there are no standards to which they are built. In this simulation and the two to come, I write an X on a blank sheet of paper and start a separate timer to see how long it takes to produce my special order. I allow them to continue to build for five minutes before I stop this portion of the simulation. So let's review the metrics on the first run. We used four tables. There were five in whip. They only produced four good planes, and there were only 15% that were good. The lead time for the X plane was one minute. There were six people producing. The time was five minutes for the total run, and their productivity, which is good parts divided by people divided by time, was 0.133. So not necessarily a bad start considering craft mentality, but productivity was horrendous. So let's continue our historical flow and our simulation through mass production. Now if you recall during our history lesson, I mentioned that Henry Ford was the father of mass production and that people like to villainize him based off of this. Mass production is an excellent system and it is a huge step forward for craft production. One of the downfalls with mass production is the piece part metrics. So 
Workers are incentivized to produce a lot. In fact, they drive down the cost of production by producing a lot. So if two items cost $100 to produce, it costed $50 per item to produce. Now, if that same production cost of 100 were spread over 100 units, then each of those items only costed a dollar a piece. So piece part metrics actually incentivizes workers to produce more than needed, which is overproduction, which is a form of waste you'll learn later. So as a final step in the simulation, we're going to organize into an assembly line. So you'll see the huge productivity gains we'll get just from moving from a craft mentality basis to mass production and an assembly line. Now, Adam Smith discovered over two centuries ago, there are definite productivity gains to be made by dividing up tasks between workers. In this run, you can see that each worker only has a small component of the total plane to build. There are a couple of reasons why this is better than having each worker build a complete plane from start to finish. The first is it speeds up the learning curve. It'll take a while for me to learn to build this plane from start to finish, but if I only have to learn a fold or two, I can pick it up quickly. But if the work is passed along an assembly line and each worker is limited to a small set of tasks, like repeatedly tightening a few set of bolts, then you can train this pretty quickly. Secondly, there's that magical productivity gain that Adam Smith discovered from division of labor. When you divide up work, it's easier for each worker to get faster and faster at his given set of tasks. When you sum up these micro improvements, you're building a product a lot faster than you were before. I refer to this as magic because the sum of the parts is actually less than the original total amount of time it took to build the plane. Now one downside to using mass production is a high level of stress. The manager continues to push for higher volumes because this drives down the per unit cost. Each station is working independently and sending work to the next station even though they're not ready for it. This is called push production and we'll talk more about it later on the site. Also notice that the material handler adds no value to the process. In a mass production environment, work in process builds up quickly because there is an incentive to produce more. Work in process in large amounts does nothing but tie up cash and cripples the company. It also makes the material handler appear to be busy, when in reality his job function, as well as that of the manager, add no value to the final product. Because there is so much work in process, my X-Plane is caught behind a log jam. This is another downfall of mass production. It is not designed to quickly respond to rapidly changing customer demand. So let's review our metrics for the second run. In this case, we only used three tables. Work in process, there were 57 units. They produced seven good planes. 70% were good. The lead time for the X-Plane was three minutes. There were six total people in the system. Again, we ran for five minutes. And productivity in this case, good parts divided by people divided by time was 0 0.233. So again, the benefits of mass production over craft production, we see they doubled or nearly doubled their good planes produced. But work and process was through the roof, 57 compared to five. You can also see that they had a huge productivity gain from using mass production. You can see a near 75% productivity gain from the first to the second run.